Also known as Joey Bag of Donut. That's right. Uh, and to my left, right here is Oh God, don't yes. That's right, man. Give it up. Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? What is going on? Me, mothers. How goes it? How goes? How 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 goes it? And how goes it? cryptids that aren't really so common, I guess. Um, what was it? I, I, I got this all I, I wrote it all down. Everything's good. It's, um, what was it called? What was it called? What was it called? I don't know what it was called. Oh, 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 where's my notes? Yeah, it's a little harder to turn, turn pages with a paw, if you know what I mean. <laughs> mm, shut up, Bruce. <laughs> yes, Bruce, Bruce, that... That's always been my name for you. I, yeah, yeah. I have your mic down. <laughs> hey, I can do it too, mother. Ma, ma, ma. Yeah, that's right. You mean muggo. <laughs> I can stick. You know what? This is not okay. All right, man. Uh, oh, yeah. Have you ever heard of Coal Hollow Road? Master man. Well, Bruce, take it over, man. I got stuff to do, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Lincoln. You, uh, what can I say? Bruce is what your new name's for me now. Bruce? Okay. Bruce? I can't, I can't do that. Um, what's up, everybody? How are you, man? It is Saturday. Um, it is Saturday. We're just kind of hanging out today. We might do a long ep, just kind of kicking, hanging out today. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's real foggy here. It's really cool outside. Um, yeah, Lincoln, you know, last night me and Lincoln tried to go out. It was so foggy. It was insane out there. Um, but yeah, dude, today... I'm going to, man, all right. Let's just, let's get into it. All right. Oh, man. Also, while I'm thinking about it, this Monday, uh, man, it's going to be a bad ass uh, podcast. I have got my friends and badass, badass homie friend, basically family. Uh, John and George Sanchez are going to be coming on the show, and they got some awesome story. They always have, man. Uh, we got to drive a little ways to him, but man, I cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, everybody, give it up to him for again. John and George, they got some, man, they got some awesome stories. And I, you know, they're not, they're not people that bullshit either. They, uh, we, we used to play in bands together, and God, man, they would, uh, have the previous, um, stories of these encounters that they had and uh man i'm not i won't spoil i'm not even gonna like say the play but uh and i'm sure they got more now i know george he lived in a house that was just the the weirdest 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 (laughs) shit that would would happen and like uh yeah really really crazy um but uh yeah so this uh monday Coming up, it'll be, uh, ma, 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 what day? That's going to be, that's going to be June 3rd on Monday. Don't miss it. It's only going to be about 2 o'clock. We're going to do live. Then, uh, I'm going to have it where 
if you're uh, if you remember, you listen to the whole thing live. We'll be uh, it'll be uh, over for everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I gotta start doing this way. I uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, oh, I first want to thank um. Oh, God, hang on. Let me, uh, let me do something real quick. Let me figure this out. Where are my... Where are my... Uh...
I don't know if we're still connected, my friends, but we're checking. It says that we are, but are we? Find out. Hell yeah, we is. All right, I apologize for that little uh, mishap. I do. I do, I do. All right. Now. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad we learned about that and all, but... Uh, uh, now apparently the priority All right. So it started as, as a joke. The Colorado's UFO watchtower is now a hotspot for mysterious sighting. In San Luis Valley, known as the Bermuda Triangle of the West, has been a hotspot for out of this world activity. Go century. As evening descends over the UFO watchtower in South Central Colorado, the heavens transform into a mesmerizing black canvas sprinkled by twinkling stars and distant galaxies to numerous to uh, image, imagine, sorry. When it, with it comes overwhelming stillness and a profound sense of isolation. I've never seen a UFO, no rotating saucers or strange objects zigzagging and speeding across the sky. The only aliens I've encountered are the plastic figures shrouded in the darkness below me. But they aren't giving up any secrets. Standing along the viewing platform, I focus my attention on a large swath of sky above the Sangre de Cristo mountain range in Great Sand Dunes National Park, where many unexplained sightings have been witnessed. Then I wait. An hour goes by. Nothing happened. My thoughts drift to little green men with big eyes, scully and molder. <laughs> yeah. Encounters and abduction. Are the stories true? Are we being visited by travelers far, far away from the corners of our universe? Like Carl Sagan said once, if it's just us, seems like an awful waste of space. I rest my feet on the platform metal railing to get, a, get to get comfortable. Another hour goes by. Just as I get up to stretch, a thin white light, maybe a quarter mile in the east, blinks on and off, moving low and quick across the sky. There's no sound. Is that? Judy Messelin's UFO watchtower is located two miles north of Hooper, Colorado. If it weren't for the ride, the Cosmic Highway, signs of green aliens along Highway 17 pointing the way, her quirky roadside attraction resembling a spacecraft might be lost to the vastness of the San Luis Valley altogether. But earlier in the afternoon, as I sit with Messaline uh, at a table just a few steps from, uh, from her small gift shop, the place is busy. We were closed for four months. Because of the uh, coronavirus, she says lighting a cigarette. Her voice is soft and small wrinkled up here uh, ra around her eyes as she squints in the middle in the midday, midday sun. Her gold sparkle, um, nail polish, glistens, and she wears multicolored alien uh, head saw. But now that we're open, it's been kind of a crazy uh, kind of a zoo. Lots of people. Some call the San Luis Valley the Bermuda Triangle of the West. It has been a hot spot for mysterious sightings dating back to the Spanish conquistadors in the, 19, in the 1560s. And now, Messaline's place lies almost smack dab in the middle of it. For her, however, all this started as one big joke. 
I came here to raise cattle in 1995. Vesaline says, chuckling, Well, when I met the locals, they were all telling me UFO stories, and I just giggled, saying we needed to a watchtower. Well, as I struggled with cows for half, for I mean, for four and a half years, because they don't eat sand very well, and had to sell the herd, then one day I ran into one of the farmers here at the gas station, and he said I should build, I, sh- I should build the watchtower. I also laughed about about it, so I did. Initially, this was uh, just going to be a little old mom and pop business to uh, catch tourists, as it came through. Well, we had other tourist traffic come around too. Since opening in May 2000, 231 tourists from outer space have allegedly visited the area. Huh. I've seen 28 myself, as Lee says. The closest one was between here and the mountain. It was uh, narrow and really long and zipped across the sky. 11 o'clock at night, and we had a do- over a dozen people who here who saw it. We had two last night as well. They come in spurts. The mothership in 20 years, the Watchtower has attracted more than 30,000 human visitors. I first visited in 2017. Most, like myself, are curious passerbys. Some have claimed to be actual beings from Pluto and Sirius. One was a high-ranking uh, government official who, according to Vesaline, pulled out the cell phone and showed me a picture of uh, a being coming out of the ocean. No matter who visits, this one-time skeptical rancher was, has created a safe place for people to share their experience, like my podcast channel. She's heard too many stories to brush them aside. People get don't get mad or don't get made fun of here, she says. Folks will walk up and I'll ask if they've seen anything. A lot of them just hang in to hang their head, so I'll let it go. But after they have been here a bit, they'll open up and tell me about the, what they've seen. Not all those people are crazy, but I always say, not far from us, kids pose for pictures with the alien figures and the messaging uh, calls her a healing garden. Here, numerous uh, psychics have reaffirmed the existence of two large beings protecting two spinning vortexes. Those beings are here to protect the vortexes, but also help people in times of need. As a result, Vaseline requests that people leave something behind to receive good energy. Now, everything from photos and business cards to pins, keys, toys, and even personal items of lost loved ones fill the garden. Soon our conversation takes us into the gift shop. Newspaper clippings, shot glass, and and Near the register are two uh, binders full of sightings, written account, uh, accounts of dancing lights, this shaped crafts, and even a few detailed drawings. Each witnesses were uh, here on the property, sensing my interest. Vaseline mentions that various psychics have told her over the years that it's a very good hot spot. Um, is, uh, da, 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 where was I? Oh, when Vaseline pressed one particular psychic for more answers, asking just how big the ship. Oh, sorry. They'd each stand. Um, in the same spot in the shop and asked, why do you put this here? She says, I told them it was just felt right. Well, then they would say, you know that there's a crashed ship under here. I just thought, yeah, right. But when you hear it over and over, you, you uh, then you start thinking of it. When Messaline pressed uh, one particular psychic for more answers, asking just how big the ship was, the answer astonished her. She said, it's a mother ship. It's a mile long. Vesseline grabs another binder and opens it. Inside are detailed drawings that the psychic made for her that day, each depicting a large disc-shaped object with a dome in the center. One day, a group from the Navy came, came here. She says, my son said not to tell them about the crashed ship no matter what. Well, I did, and you know, 
They didn't seem surprised. I leave Messaline wondering whether any of the stories she tells me are actually true. I can't say for sure, but I'm certainly open to such possibilities. Now as I squint into the darkness surrounding the watchtower, trying to follow the strange light white, I don't even know what it is, what to think. As it travels south, I look down at the supposed mothership buried deep in the ground below me. When I look up again, the light's course, low and straight, doesn't change for about 15 seconds. Then, just as quickly as it appeared, it blinks one last time and disappears. Well, All right. Uh, let me tell if anyone's heard of this. Let me know. This is a. Uh, oh shit! Oh wait. Okay. Spearfinger and Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Like the Sanderson sisters from Hocus Pocus, Spearfinger uh, is a witch known for uh, coveting delicious youth. Originating as Cherokee lore, she is also called Utlum Tunana. Taw, which translates to Spearfinger, referring to her long, dragging, uh, like stone finger. Ew. According to legend, she would disguise herself as a feeble old woman to lure children close, then use her spear finger, sharp as an uh, obsidian knife, to steal their lives. Livers, I'm sorry, steal their livers. She prefers the cover of fog to catch her victims when they wander off to drink from a stream or pick berries on the outskirts of the village. But in the fall, she would be drawn to villagers by the smoke from brush fires set by the tribe. Every fall, villagers would burn entire mountainsides to easily find and harvest the roasted chet test. This made it easy for Spearfinger to find them and and feast on her favorite cuisine, liver. Yeah. Spearfinger is said to roam the mountains of eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina, much of which is now a part of Great Smoky Mountain National Park. With over 150 known cemeteries dotting the, mister, the misty ridgelines, the, smoke, the Smokies are a regular backdrop to spooky tales. These ancient mountains are full of history, diverse flora and fauna, and breathtaking views. The dirt campers recommend G Greek G G Creek Campground. Am I saying that right? A primitive campground located on the Hawassi and Okaki River. If you like to keep your feet dry, then check out one of the nearby hiking and biking trails. The dirt camper Sherry G enjoyed a lovely bike riding along the back roads of Appalachia. You are sure not to or to meet some nice folks as well as some real characters in these mountain haulers. If you find yourself in one of those mountain haulers when the fog begins to roll in and catch a glimpse of an old woman with a lone raven singing a haunting song, you may be in the company of Thanks, Billy. Paranormal Activity in Mammoth Cave National Park. Have your own X-Files experience at Kentucky's Mammoth Cave. The world's longest known cave system, guided tours have been offered at Mammoth Cave since 1816, making it the nation's second oldest tourist attraction uh, after Niagara Falls. More than 400 miles of vast chambers and intricate labyrinths have been explored, but there are still unexplained dark corners where mythical beasts could easily be lurking in the shadows. Before the caves were a tourist attraction, they were used by Native Americans for thousands of years. Ancient artifacts and petroglyphs have been discovered in the cave, many of them 4,000 to 2,000 years old. It was uh, used as a salt peter mine. Salt peter used to make gunpowder during the War of 1812. After the war, the cave was used for a physician's experiment. The doctor believed the cave's constant temperature and humidity could heal the suffering, those suffering from consumption, tuberculosis. 
The experiment tended or ended in failure after several uh, participants died in the cave. By the mid 1800s, the cave had been a tour, become a tourist attraction, and young slaves worked as guides. One of those guides was Stephen Bishop. According to the National Park Service, Bishop was became one of the most celebrated guides in Mammoth Cave's history. Bishop's ghost is allegedly still exploring the caves and has been seen following tour group. Caverns of Mammoth Cave National Park have been called the most haunted natural wonder in the world. The cave's mystery, uh, along with its sheer size, has fueled legends and expo- explorations for centuries. Camp Mammoth Cave Campground for easy access to the visitor centers and cave tours. The dirt camper Stephanie T. went on a cave tour and right. If you aren't afraid of uh, cramped dark spaces, squeezing through tight spots and darkness, try the wild cave tour. Otherwise, go to the easier historic tour. All right, well... Our next one, the Banshee Badlands National Park. Now, man, this is a this is just a crazy looking place, man. If you've never been there, try to uh, bucket list that, man. It's pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool looking. Wailing women are a common theme in folklore. The origin of the ban- Banshee comes from the ancient Ireland. Known for their chilling wail, a banshee is a spirit of a woman that was murdered or died from childbirth. The Badlands Banshee is said to perch on top of a watchdog, Pab Butte, (laughs) but legend has it that she is the ghost of a murdered woman who lures people close by mounting the question, mouthing a question that no one can hear. Once you get close enough, she chills you on her on your bone. With their blood, curdling scream, failing, flailing her arms as she disappears into the plain sight, then reappears, all oh, still shrieking, on top of the butt. <laughs> the In 1864, General Alfred Soley described the Badlands as hell with the fire gone out. The labyrinth of canyons and towering rock spires give the park an ominous aurora. However, the striking rock formations are rugged landscape of Badlands National Park. They have been visitors and archaeologists from all around the world. The region is the remains of a dried up seafloor and home to one of the world's richest fossil beds. When you're not distracted by what by whales of sorrow, you can enjoy stargazing at Badlands National Park, where up to seven thousand five hundred stars are visible on clear nights. The dirt campers, Selena M., set up camp at Cedar Pass Campground. She decided to sleep without a rainy, without a, without a rain fly for a better view of the Milky Way and writes, The Badlands provide a dramatic landscape during the day and one of the most incredible landscapes at night. Our next place... Chupacabra in Puerto Rico's El Yunque National Forest. No mythical beast list would be complete without including the creature from the south. Its name translates to Goat Sucker. Yes. That's right. Now, stories of the Chupacabra sightings were rampant. In the mid-1990s, when farm animals, usually goats, were found with their bodies intact but entirely drained of blood. Eyewitnesses dis- often describe it as hoping, hopping around on two legs like a kangaroo with scaly reptilian skin, large red eyes, long fangs, and sharp spines running down its back. The whole red eye thing, man, that's, that's just, you know, gets me, man. Well, I'm just saying. Chupacabra quickly reached levels of fame comparable to Bigfoot. In August of 1995, at least 150 farm animals were killed near the town of Canavanas, Puerto Rico. Each animal was uh, was left unscathed except for vampire-like punctures, marks, and the complete absence of blood. The beast has been terrorizing farm animals and making headlines ever since. 
sightings of the chupacabra in Puerto Rico's El Yonqui National Park or forest are so common that the U.S. territory is also known as Chupacabra's Island. El Yonqui is the United States' only tropical rainforest, Canavanis, the town where the majority of original sightings and animal attacks occurred, is located on the border of El Yonqui. This national forest is one of the smallest, covering 29,000 acres, but it's also one of the most biologically diverse. It is home of to thousands of plant species and hundreds of animal species, which uh, many of which exist nowhere else in the world. Camp El Yunque National Forest and in, uh, and enjoy camp in I'm sorry El Yunque National Forest and enjoy the many hiking trails, waterfalls, and even shore of uh, tiny tree frogs. Visitors can hike the Mount Britain Trail to a stone tower built by the Civilian Cons- Conservation Corps in the 1930s. From the tower, you can take the in paranormal views of the surrounding rainforest, the Caribbean Sea, and the Atlantic Ocean. El Yunque is a, gen- a gentle jungle since it has no mosquitoes or poisonous snakes. So, you can focus on worrying about the chupacabra. And Yeah. Well, my friends, that is all I have time for today. I'll probably be on uh, later around three. Everybody, have a wonderful day, man. I appreciate it. Linky. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Hey, it was fun. Don't miss Monday, June 3rd. George and John Sanchez are coming live, everybody. Podcast at podbean.com. Everyone, have a wonderful weekend. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, thank you, everybody. I'm your host, Joey Genoa Bell Shaddy. And Noah Bell, another show prevails, guys. Have a good